Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, before I begin, I want to take a minute to uh, introduce everyone that's up here with me. To my left is the uh, Honorable Paul Deister, the uh, mayor of Niagara Falls. Welcome. Uh, next to him is Mike Violani, district attorney for Niagara County. And of course, to the left of Mike is John Shella, chief of police for the Niagara Falls Police Department. To my right is Donna Owens, city administrator for Niagara Falls. Uh, next to her is Brian Del Porto, the uh, lieutenant in charge of the narcotics and intel division for the Niagara Falls Police Department. And to his right is John DeMarco, a captain with the uh, Niagara Falls Police Department. Thank you for coming and, and welcome. Uh, we are here today to announce the, uh, the culmination of an investigation that was conducted jointly by the Drug Enforcement Administration uh, Buffalo Task Force Group along with the Niagara Falls Police Department. This investigation was titled Operation Wild Nation. Uh, this investigation began in October of this year uh, when the Niagara Falls Police Narcotics Unit and the Buffalo DEA Task Force uh, initiated a case uh, in, in which they targeted uh, several street gangs in the city of Niagara Falls. Uh, these were hybrid street gangs known as the Ninth and Wild, the Eighth Street Boys, the Twentieth and Center, and the GMN, along with the Stash Team. These street gangs were all operating uh, within the city limits of the, uh, the Niagara Falls area. These hybrid street gang members are responsible for over 600 arrests in the city of Niagara Falls, and uh, their actions include violent assaults, home invasions, robberies, burglaries, and drug distribution. The Niagara Falls Police Narcotics Unit, along with the Buffalo DEA Task Force, made several controlled purchases of crack cocaine from these gang members during the course of this investigation. Uh, the case concluded and culminated in two phases. On November 29th of this year, the DEA and the Niagara Falls Police Department located and arrested Steve Knighton, Randy Knighton, and Robert Knighton, and charged them with federal arrest warrants, uh, charging distribution of a controlled substance. <clears throat> On December 13th of 2011, the DEA and the Niagara Falls Police Department located and arrested 17 subjects, also on federal arrest warrants, charging distribution of a controlled substance. John Byrne. In addition to these 17 individuals, there is an additional nine subjects which have been charged under federal arrest warrants but have not been located. All of these individuals are being charged with violation of Title 21, United States Code 841, uh, subsections A1, possession with intent to distribute and distribution of a quantity of mixture of substance containing cocaine base and or uh, cocaine. Of the, uh, the individuals that we've talked about, I'm going to name to you the, the uh, 17 that were uh, picked up this morning. Uh, they include Ashley Barnes, Rashawn Blackman, Michael Brewer, Christopher Cessna Carter, Rashawn Dix, Daryl Martin, Paul Fields, Johnny Gaddis, Hassad Hickson, Curry Jones, Alexander Matthews, Dion McTeer, Sean Pryor, Lavester Rose, Morris Shavers, John Smith, and Rashawn Vincent. Before I turn things over to, to Chief Chella, I just want to take a minute to thank the Niagara Falls Police Department, and, and more specifically, uh, Lieutenant DePorto in the uh, Narcotics Unit and in the Intel Division. Uh, they have done a wonderful job in identifying these individuals and helping us target them and work this case. Uh, this is a case which truly uh, will affect the quality of life of citizens in the Niagara Falls area. Uh, these are all people that, that we suspect have been engaged in uh, drug trafficking activities. Uh, we, we believe that by their arrests today, we are, uh, we are really uh, impacting uh, the activities of, of several street gangs, uh, which are really uh, terrorizing uh, neighborhoods in the city of Niagara Falls. Uh, with that, I'd like to, uh, to let Chief Chella come up and say a few things. <clears throat> Thanks, Dale. Conversely, I would like to thank resident agent in charge Dale Kasperzak and group supervisor Michelle Spahn and their staff, who, uh, without their valuable assistance in this investigation, we wouldn't be here today. 
I'd also like to thank Lieutenant, uh, Captain Morris Shamrock, Lieutenant Brian Del Porto, and his, the members of his uh, unit, the Narcotics and Intelligence Unit, for their contribution to this investigation. I'd also like to thank uh, U.S. Attorney William Holcomb. And if you remember, I was there in 2009 in March when we had blood clot. We took down a significant portion of the blood gang here in Niagara Falls. And at the time, Bill said that his focus for Niagara Falls would be to eradicate drugs and violence here. And I think he and his staff have demonstrated that dedication by the federal arrest warrants that you have before you today. As Dale said, a number of, uh, a number of these organizations have been taken down. We, the investigators in this case, have label them as hybrid gangs, without territory, without uh, feuds. They're in, the, they're in the process of making money collectively. Um, we are a Comstat Police Department in that every two weeks we have a detailed crime analysis of the previous two weeks of crime. Every name behind me. And, and Captain DeMarco hosts the meeting, and I try to sit in on every one. Every name behind me has been mentioned one way or another during our CompStat meeting. So they are no strangers to the Niagara Falls Police Department. I also would like to repeat what Dale said. If you look at the chart, under each one will be the number of arrests that they have incurred in their adult life. With no disrespect, to Niagara County District Attorney Mike Violani, nor the New York State uh, judicial system, these gentlemen, uh, it's a revolving door for them in and out of the state system. So I really want to thank Phil Hochul and Dale Kasperzak for giving us the opportunity to get these individuals into the federal system, where hopefully we can get stiffer sentences to get them off the street. They are a disruptive force to the quality of life in Niagara Falls. I, I did some research before we come down, and I looked at our crime stats pre-blood clot and post-blood clot. And the, the results were dramatic post-blood clot. We saw a dramatic decrease in violent crime, aggravated assault, and robbery. And I fully expect the same to happen with these individuals off the streets. I'd now like to turn it over to our Niagara County District Attorney, Mike Violani. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Kasperzak, Mr. Mayor, this is kind of a, a second generation, so to speak, although the prior blood clot uh, arrangement, uh, spearheaded by the Drug, <clears throat> Drug Enforcement Agency and the U.S. Attorney's Office, took down several people who are still incarcerated Many of these people that, uh, that we see that were part of this roundup today um, are younger. They are people that are filling in the cracks. Several of them have uh, begun their involvement with street crime and drugs dealing since blood clot. It's nice to, uh, to grab them up, get them off the street. And as Chief said, uh, we always welcome partnering with the United States Attorney's Office on violent crime and crimes that involve the possession and sale of controlled substances because their laws are stiffer. They don't deal with uh, judicial diversion and other programs that are, that are meant and, and have been formulated by the state of New York to assist and help drug users. These, none of these people are drug users. These are all drug dealers. These people belong in jail. They, they have uh, the propensity to become violent, to carry weapons. They do all the things that none of us want to see on, the, on our streets where our families and our children uh, regularly uh, pass on their, on their, in their everyday lives. So we're very happy for the United States Attorney's involvement once again. We welcome this uh, type of prosecution at any time that involves drugs so we can get them into the federal system where we hope at least in my opinion, and we know based on the record that some of these people have, their prior felony convictions, their prior contact with the criminal justice system, the way they uh, meet out crime sentences in the federal system, 
will encourage the judges in federal court to give them lengthy drug sentences where we feel they wouldn't get lengthy sentences for drug involvement in here in New York State. So my congratulations for a job well done in Niagara Falls Police Department who spearheaded the investigation, put together the package, so to speak, that we handed to the United States Attorney's Office and the additional work that the Drug Enforcement Agency has done in assisting the Niagara Falls Police Department. My hat's off to Chief Chella, to Captain Shamrock, to Lieutenant Del Porto, and all of the hardworking guys that work in the narcotics unit for the Niagara Falls Police Department and the Drug Enforcement Agency. Without their help, their hard work, and I mean hard work, and many long hours of hard work, we wouldn't be here today. So my thanks to them, uh, and hopefully our continued relationship with the United States Attorney's Office and the Drug Enforcement Agency will continue. Uh, as you all know, uh, John Chella, who has been the superintendent of police in Niagara Falls for about 11 and a half years, is retiring. We will all miss him. We hope that uh, his replacement will carry on the same great relationship that we have with the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Drug Enforcement Agency. It's necessary, and uh, we thank him for his great service for these past 12 years and the relationships that he's created. We need him to continue. Thank you. I, on that, it, it's a, I'm in a great position. I got 16 days. <laughs> and contrary to what you've heard, and I'm going to state this loud, and I'm going to state this clear. It's been reported in several uh, publications and venues that uh, this mayor is not supportive of the Niagara Falls Police Department. That could be further from the truth. We're going into 2012 with an increase, correct, in the 2000, from the 2011 budget. We've got an increase. In, in these financial times, the Niagara Falls Police Department has a budget that's growing. We are able to, on a retirement, immediately fill that position because of this mayor. I don't know where the story started that we're not getting our support. He's standing behind me today because he supports us. And I would invite him to come up and say a few words to my last roundup. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the city administrator and I uh, came rushing from University of Buffalo to be at this event uh, today. The governor uh, was at UB today uh, congratulating us here in Western New York on our success in this uh, competition to be one of the top four economic development plans across the state and made a very welcome announcement of a $35 million grant uh, to support the University of Buffalo in the UB 2020 uh, plan. So that was great news for economic development. But there wasn't a local elected official there who doesn't understand that all of that is for naught if we are unable to provide the basic atmosphere of public safety and public confidence in our law enforcement institutions. That is the foundation of all economic growth and all economic development. And nowhere, I think, is that truer than here in the city of Niagara Falls where we have to overcome both the reality and at times the perception of lawlessness in the city of Niagara Falls in order to encourage investment